Okay, the next problem goes something like this, and we'll continue building on what we've done, and we'll forge a little new ground as well. You have 20 people in an election, 20 candidates, okay? How many different ways can you choose a president, a vice president, and a secretary, okay? So what you have here is 20 eligible people, uh, you know, in a list on the ballot, and you're only going to pick first, second, third place, basically, vice president, I'm uh, sorry, president, vice president, and secretary. So there's three winners, basically, first, second, third place, kind of like our race, okay? And I'm trying to figure out how many different ways can that happen. So let's go ahead and calculate it and relate it back to our permutations and, and all of that. Now, we could construct a tree diagram. I mean, I could list all the names, and then I could list the president, and then all the possible vice presidents, and then all the possible secretaries, and I would have a very big tree because I have president, vice president, and secretary. I could count them all up and that would be the answer. But the whole point of this is to be able to calculate it without writing all the stuff down um, every time. I mean, obviously you can't do that every single time. So let's go ahead and use the fundamental counting principle because we know that we have uh, three events. The event one is president, okay? That's what we're choosing first. Event two is the vice president. That's what we're choosing second. And event three is the secretary. Okay? So we have the president, vice president, and secretary. Okay? We have 20 people, okay, that we can choose from. 20 people. So how many ways can you choose president if you have 20 people to choose from? Well, I can have 20 ways to choose the president, okay? Now, I've made a choice. I've chosen my particular uh, candidate for president. How many choices do I have left for vice president? Well, I only have 19 uh, ways that I can choose the vice president, okay? But now that I've chosen the vice president out of 20 people, how many ways can I choose a secretary? Well, I only have 18 choices left, so there's 18 different ways that I can choose a secretary. So I have 20 ways for the first guy, 19 ways for the second guy, 18 ways for the third person, and that's because after I chose the first one, I only had 19 choices left, and after I chose him, I only had 18 choices left. The fundamental counting principle, and I'll just go back and read it you know, verbatim just to reinforce it. You have E1, E2, E3, and so on, events. This is event one, this is event two, and this is event three, okay? Event one can happen M1 ways, and this way we said it's 20 ways. Event two can happen M sub two ways. Here we're saying it's 19 ways. Event three can happen 18 ways, uh, M sub 3. The fundamental counting principle says that the number of ways in which the whole thing can happen is 20 times 19 times 18. Okay, and when you do that, you will see that that's 6,840 uh, ways. And since the order does matter, that's what we're talking about in election here, these are called permutations. Okay, so 6,840 permutations is another way of saying the same thing. So what we're saying here, we're using the fundamental accounting principle. This many ways, this many ways for the second candidate, this many ways for the third. You multiply them together, you get the answer. That's the number of permutations that you have, okay? Now, I just want to prove to you, notice that the order did, did matter. Because if, for instance, if I had, here's the president, here's the VP, and here's the secretary, okay? Let's say person A uh, picked, let's say, Mark for the president, let's say they pick Jane for the vice president, and let's say they pick Sarah for the secretary. That is one permutation of, a, of, of the way in which the things can be ordered, okay? But if I turn it around and say, okay, Sarah, so, someone else picked Sarah, and that other person picked Jane for the vice president again, and then, and then picked Mark for the secretary, okay? They're the same people involved. These, this listing of people is the exact same listing, uh, I'm sorry, the exact same people as in the second listing here, but these are different permutations. These are different permutations because the order is different. I keep beating it into your head over and over again. For permutations, the order is always different. The, the order matters is another way you'll see it written in the books. Anytime you have first place, second place, third place, anytime you have a race, anytime you have uh, uh, vice president, president, treasurer, anything that, that you can just think about for a second and say, well, look, if I switch the order of people, the permutation is going to be different. The socks on my bed, red, yellow, and then green. Okay, now I switch them. Green, and then red, and then yellow. Those are different ordering. So it's a different ordering, and if I'm looking at it in terms of trying to pick different orders of socks on my bed, those are going to be different permutations. So that's what we're, what we're trying to say here. Now let me introduce something I hinted about just a minute ago. You will see this in your book. 
If you have permutations, permutations of n elements taken r at a time, okay, n elements taken r at a time, yeah, I'm going to underline the word taken. I'm going to come back to that in a second. But they're n elements taken r at a time. This is a little different than what we had last time. Then what you will see in your book is n, little n, big P, little r. Let me write it down. We'll talk about it. It's defined as n factorial over n minus r factorial. That's what it's defined as, okay? So before you get too scared of this formula, this is doing exactly the same thing as the fundamental counting principle. We were doing the fundamental counting principle here. We were saying the first thing can happen 20 ways, the next thing can happen 19 ways, the third thing can happen 18 ways. This formula is doing exactly what we did there. It's just in a kind of a more obscure notation, okay? How would we apply this, okay? If we were going to apply the problem we just solved to that, what we're saying here in our election is we had 20 uh, candidates, so we had n things n elements taken r at a time. r is different than n because the number r, uh, when you're using this formula, is not going to be the same as the number n. So you have 20 elements taken three at a time because it, we're actually only looking at three different people at once, basically. Those are the different the, the, the el number of elements we're looking at at any given time. So the way you would write that down is you would say 20p3. n is 20 because I have 20 elements. P for permutation, and I'm looking three at a time because I only have three places here in my, in my list. That's all I care about. Okay, so since n is 20, you have 20 factorial, n factorial, and on the bottom you're going to have 20 minus 3 factorial. So now it's just math, okay? So let me simplify this a little bit. 20 factorial over 20 minus 3 is 17 factorial. Now, once you get to this step, you can do a few things. You can put 20 factorial in your calculator and you can calculate a big, big number on the top because what does this mean, by the way? 20 factorial is 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 all the way down to times 1. So it's going to be a very big number. On the bottom, 17 factorial is 17 times 16 times 15 times 14 all the way down to times 1. So it's, again, a very big number. You can multiply them by hand and then you can divide. You can put 20 factorial in your calculator and get a big number, top and bottom, and you, and you can divide. But I'm going to show you something because you really, uh, you really need to learn this. It'll, it'll really help you out a lot. Okay, let me show you something real quick. I'm only going to do this probably one time, but I do want to, I do want to get, give you the hang of it here. What is 20 factorial? Just write it out. 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15. Now, I don't have enough room, so I'm going to write times dot 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 times 1. That's what 20 factorial is on the top. All of this stuff is divided by 17 factorial, which is 17 times 16 times 15. Again, times dot 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 all the way down to 1. Now, Think back to algebra or basic math or whatever. You have a bunch of stuff multiplied together and you have a bunch of stuff multiplied on the bottom. The 17 is going to cancel with the 17, the 16 cancels with the 16, the 15 with the 15, the 14, 13, 12, all the way down. The 1 is going to cancel with the 1. So basically, everything from here on actually cancels out. So in the end, all you're going to have is 20 times 19 times 18. Okay? So you have 20 times 19 times 18. When we calculated that before, that's 6, 8, 4, 0. Now look at what we did here. I told you that this formula that you'll see in the book, and a lot of people shudder when they look at it, oh, permutations, it looks so complicated, okay? You put the stuff in, look what happened. The 20 on the, on the top and the 17 on the bottom, most of it ended up actually canceling. All I was left with was 20 times 19 times 18. This gave me the answer. Now go back up here. That's exactly the same math that we actually did up here using the fundamental counting principle. So what I'm trying to drill in is that when you're using the permutation formulas, okay, when you have a problem, when you're using the permutation formulas and you're actually uh, doing, that's why it says when it's taken, n elements taken are at a time. This case, when we're doing a first place, second place, third place, or a presidential race where you're, you have first place, second place, third place effectively, after you remove the first element, you have 
um, less elements left to choose from, those kinds of problems, you'll be, you, you can use these formulas, okay? In those cases, when you're applying n elements taken r at a time, or n elements even taken n at a time, the math that you do when you put n factorial, n minus r factorial, gives you the exact same thing as if you had just used the fundamental counting principle. So really, I prefer to start teaching the fundamental counting principle first, just so you can kind of see what that is. And then this whole permutation formula thing is it becomes such, such a big deal. They're all doing the same thing. It's just that this, for instance, might be much more uh, easy to use in a computer. You might be able to program, program a computer to do this a lot better than teach it how to use the fundamental counting principle. 